Hi, it's Susan here, and I am getting geared up to do a tutorial here, and I'm just going to show you what I anticipate on using. Um, but I will put all the supplies at the beginning of the video, uh, regardless, as I sometimes and often change my mind as I go along. So what I have here uh, to start with is I went to Michael's, and I got these, it was a two pack uh, wood boards and they are odd shape or odd size. It's just uh, just shy of 11 inches so or 12 inches. It's 11.75 I'd say um, inches. So that's that and I have it on a Lazy Susan here that I, I got off of Amazon. You just need to Google Lazy Susan turntables or something and you'll find them. So that fits on there perfectly and I really like to use turntables. Um, I did uh, one coat of black gesso which is uh, by Liquitex. It's my favorite brand uh, I use as a base coat. And if I want a black background, it works just fine. Um, it comes out a beautiful matte black. Covers very, very quickly. So um, you only need one coat. So that's that. Um, then I found my center. And there's lots of ways to find the center of a circle, um, which I'm sure you can Google uh, or search on YouTube for um, getting a piece of paper, cutting it into the circle shape, and then finding the middle by folding it. Anyway, I found my center. I used this uh, template by Happy Dotting Company, um, which is a variety of different Mylar um, stencils. And so I just popped that one on there. And I have lots of other ones that I really like. I got these ones from the Dotting Center, so it's nice for a 12 by 12 canvas. Um, I have a good collection, and very soon I will have some more coming to do some fun tutorials from the Dotting Center. So I marked that using um, just a, uh, this is a charcoal white pencil, I got these on AliExpress very inexpensively. I finally figured out how to sharpen these um, without the tips breaking all the time. And I just have an electric sharpener that I found on Amazon. And I'm sure wherever you live, you can find one of those. I also used um, a yellow watercolor pencil but they both come off just as easily. It's just, um, I didn't feel like changing out my big, big compass. So again, this is something else you can find on Amazon for when you're doing bigger pieces. This is a very, very robust um, compass and it stays very true. Unlike my other little one that I have here, it, it's not as, um, not as solid, like this little plastic piece. This is, I don't know. I find I have to tighten the screw all the time because it starts getting loose. So in a pinch for smaller pieces, I use that. And today I will be using the Happy Dotting Company, the newer tool set. These are listed as millimeters. So from one to four, 15 and a half millimeters so they're double sided and I'll show you in the video the numbers so you know what size and you don't have to rely on my audio which is really good for people who don't live or speak English I should say who don't speak English um, the translator on YouTube doesn't always work um, so uh, I haven't quite figured that out I do the best I can. The styluses I'm using, I'm switching over to these ones for a little while, see how they work. Um, my good friend uh, Demi of Dot, uh, Thoughtful Dots uses these, so if people are watching her videos, 
um, they are used to her saying the small end of the blue tube or blue tool or the large end of the blue tool. Um, so there with these with this set, there's one side that they're all the same size, and I think it's one and a half millimeters. Where the other side has the ones that I use the most. It's usually these three. So I will also put a little chart in there. So if you need to know the millimeter sizes, um, I'll stick that in the video. And these you can get off of AliExpress, which they come from China. Most of all these things come from China, except for Happy Dotting Company. <laughs> um, they're all pretty standard, you know, but you could probably buy the whole set for like a dollar, dollar fifty. So don't ever be spending more than a couple of bucks on these because they're super, super inexpensive. That's just my little tip for the day. What else have I not shown you? Oh, paint. So my pattern Hippy Dippy, I think the last I looked, it had close to 80,000 views. I wish all those views turned into actual people who um, have subscribed to my channel because boy, that would really, really, really help. So if you do watch my videos, um, subscribe because as an artist, it helps build our channels and also our emotional uh, end of things to know that people are liking the content that we're doing. Um, I do not have the monetization set up, so I'm not gaining any financial money from YouTube by you watching this. Uh, this is something I've not done and probably won't do. Um, anyway, so that's that. Uh, <clears throat> also, I have a, a very full Instagram page that has where I post all the work that I'm working on. Um, and you can see and keep up to date there. If you follow me there too, that would be really, really helpful. I like to promote other artists um, because I feel we all have a little bit to contribute, well, a lot to contribute to make your choices in the kind of designs and style of dotting that you do, whether you use just the dotting tools or like myself are switching over to experimenting with the um, brush strokes using um, these type of tools. Oops, that one's got some gold on it. I need to clean off a bit better. Um, <clears throat> so however you get the your designs, um, there's so many artists out there that will help you through the process of learning a new technique. And, and I'm in the process of learning a new technique through Demi. Um, I completed um, several of Leona Hada um, courses. She does brush dotting courses, but it's a different type of brush dotting. Um, and the brushes are, they're just a little bit different. Um, I don't know if I have one that I use a lot. That's probably one that I like for Leona's style of dotting. Um, oh, here it is. Here's my favorite one. It's um, by Princeton, and it's uh, a round two over zero. As you can see, it's well loved. I have to get another one. So it's hers. Her style is much different. So um, you know, we're always learning, and I mean, unless you are set in your your style, don't be afraid to dive into something new. Okay, so uh, back to what I'm doing today. Yeah, I'm rambling. Um, I really like the hippy dippy, uh, colors cause they're very vibrant and they're shiny and they just seem to sing, make people happy. Um, and that's why that video was, or it continues to be, uh, my top viewed one. So in the hippy dippy pattern, I do show you the alternate paint brands that you can use to achieve a similar look. And you can go back to that if you'd like. For instance, um, the uh, Folk Art Aquaflash, these two are very, very similar when they dry. Um, 
think the, the green one was close. This had more yellow in it, but there, there certainly are enough options out there. But I'll demonstrate these today, but basically you need sort of a, a pinky red, a purple, violet, purple, blue, green, and an orange. And together that's, oh, and I'll also be using my favorite um, golden fluid, iridescent gold in deep, fine. That's, uh, that's my favorite and it's getting low. Time to get a new one. I probably, probably have one stashed as I usually do. The other one I have in a, I wish they, that I could get this one in a, in this size. Um, this one's just a bit brighter. Actually, let's use that one today because it, it has more of that uh, brightness, which will give that sort of yellow compliment there. So let's do that. All right, let's get set up. Okay, so what you're going to need is your paint. And if you're using a heavy bodied acrylic, you're going to need a product to thin it down a, lit, a bit. Uh, I prefer the pouring medium by Liquitex. Uh, I also use Flow Aid by Liquitex, uh, and I make my own mix. Uh, it's one part Flow Aid and two parts or twenty parts water, so I just put it in a little little container like that and squirt it when I need it. They they kind of do a, different things. This adds a bit of body as well as thinning it, so it's it's nice for these. Um, yeah. Anyway, I have a little stick like this, which is used for mixing. I got these in a little package, uh, again from AliExpress, very handy. And due to my arthritis, I have difficulty opening things, so it makes a great tool. <laughs> okay, I don't think I need very much of this stuff. And I do have a video in my list on how to um, get the right paint consistency for um, your heavy bodied paints, but I'm just gonna zip through this. It's about 50-50 usually. So if it does that, it's still too thick. A lot of factors play into paint consistency. Uh, right now we've got full summer sort of coming in and it's making my paints dry quicker. So I found I when I was painting yesterday, I had to add a lot of flow aid periodically as I was painting um, to get the right consistency. So it's never going to be perfect. Even the ones straight out of the bottle will have to be changed occasionally. So this is still looking a little bit thick to me because when it peaked, it's just a little bit, just need a tad more. And so there, I put too much paint in the tray. I knew that right away. Oh well, we'll work with it. Try not to make a mess. I haven't used my brushes with this type of paint yet. Um, I might do an ex experiment down the road here with it, but I think this, we'll see what happens today. <laughs> I just don't know until you get going. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I'll come back when all the rest are done. Okay, <clears throat> here we are. There's your paints, nice and metallic. Um, that's by PBO Studios, Studio Acrylic High Viscosity and uh, Iridescence. Love them. All right, so put that over here. I'm going to try to keep this in frame for you. I'm going to start off with a large tool. Don't be afraid 
to load up with lots of paint. This first dot sometimes squishes out in little bubbles, so I just have to be careful here. And it's not the nicest of canvases, I must say. It's kind of rough, so it's creating a little rough edge on my dot there. But in the big picture, it's not going to make a huge difference. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm loading up the dot. see that. Oops. Try to get an angle shot, but it's not. Anyway, it's really, it's really full. And when it dries, it'll look like a nice button. Plump, plump button. Just tapping very, very gently just to see if I can fill in those little raggedy bits there from the canvas, but it's not cooperating that way, so that's fine. We will leave it alone. Um, clean off your tool. My tool, I my paper towel, I have it a little bit damp, just slightly damp, and it just cleans off so easily when it's that way. Okay, there's our first dot. I hope you took a nice big breath when you did that. There's a couple little bubbles in there you can sometimes tap them out or just get a little pokey thing and there's a skill to that on trying to get those little things if they bug you but i know a particular artist christina she loves to pop her little bubbles there <laughs> Okay, now on to the next. Okay, I've got the white tool. There's a big end and a little end. So I'm going to go with the little end of the white tool and I'm going with gold. So I'm going with the gold. And I'm just going to place a dot on every grid line. Sometimes I'll go every other and then fill in between just to get that spacing. Let's move that over a bit. There, how's that? So on this one, the grid one wanted me to go a little bit more this way, but by doing every other one, I could see that the spacing was better a little bit more this way. So that's how you can, the grid lines are not always perfect. And I'm just gonna clean my tool off as, <clears throat> excuse me, as you're dotting, the paint will have a tendency to dry on your tool and then make your dots bigger. I'm not doing this pattern super tight in with the dots because I know there's a lot of beginners out there and I thought I'll just make this one a little easier for you. Might be your first bigger piece of work. I want to make it too hard. Okay, I'm going to go up to the larger size now and I'm going to go, I think I'm just going to do like maybe three rows of color before we start making petals. And I kind of just, let me see what color I want to go with. Try not to overthink it. <laughs> so 
going to go with the violet or purpley color here. The reason I'm tapping is I'm wanting a little bit more paint to come off the tool. Sometimes if you get enough paint on there, you don't have to go back and dot as long as you're watching your dot size grow. Let's see how we go here. I've noticed um, online so many people um, that have made the hippie, hippie dippy pattern and have been able to sell it in their markets. I think that's pretty exciting that you're able to make a little bit of money off of something like that. Don't forget to um, tag me or say where your inspiration comes from when you originally post on social media. Certainly don't need to do that when you're going to sell it, but... It's always nice to see your work and show appreciation where you got the uh, idea from is, is, is good, it's good, it's good. Okay, let's see, let me go here. Hopefully that's in focus. Okay, so I'm going to use the blue, blue stylus, the larger end, and I'm going to use the blue again. see the grain of the board is misshaping the dots a little bit but I'm not worried about that because it is something handmade the wood has its own character in itself and I never aim to have things perfect nothing in this world should be perfect in my mind unobtainable goals <laughs> Rant, rant. Thanks for being so patient with me over the last year or so. Just not having consistency in videos. I apologize for that. Just can't help. Can't help what my body does. And I have to follow that. There. So that really gives a nice frame around that blue dot by adding that little blue ring and then now i think i'll add one larger dot here and then we'll we'll do the full petals and stuff let's see here okay i think the five should fit in this space i kind of just went around and i want to try and stay within that that little green line or grid line and i'm going to use the green it's going to add a nice highlight because it's, it's nice and bright. If I don't press all the way down, I can stay within that grid line.
Anytime you guys have questions or comments, please go down to the little comment section down below and I pretty much aim to answer all questions that are there. Um, if you're trying to find something, you can always search through my list uh, or just ask. I try to put most of the links to items, but I am in Canada and a lot of my viewership is in the United States, so it doesn't help you guys too much. All right, what do you think of that? I like, I like a lot. Okay, we'll go with the 10. I'm going with the, uh, the ready color pinky red and I'm going to go every other grid line so we'll make it uh, eight point it's big big and juicy dots here so one dot you get that kind of squished look I am NOT a fan of that these paints have a tendency to be a little transparent depending on the color so I bulk it up this will dry in a nice little shiny button. There, yummy, yummy. The little gaps in this part here, I can come in afterwards with some little gold dots. I'm just going to let all the paint dry before I do that. You can use a cone or a small stylus. A nice quiet morning my my husband took my dog on a little road trip up to Duncan to do a errand up there that's given me about two hours of to myself so that's that I would start this poor puppy uh, just recovering from being attacked by three dogs oh my god the trauma of that she had a couple little well, a couple puncture wounds, and but she's all healed up now. Now we just have a $400 bill that we had to pay for that. Just pretty frustrating. I wish owners that can't keep their dogs on a leash, or at least if they cause damage to your dog, would offer up some compensation, but it doesn't happen. Anyway, that's... That was last week. <laughs> okay, cleaning off the tool here again. And that little wet paper towel trick does, does the trick. So there we go. What do you think of that? Boy, the colors just really bounce off each other, don't they? Beautiful. Now we're gonna come in and do some gold, gold tapers around these. Okay, I have the white tool. I'm going to use the larger end of the white tool first to put a dot down and then I'll taper with the smaller end and we're using gold. It's just my way I like to do it. Put a little bigger dot here. I've used the word cherry dot before. Just put a little cherry on top. This one's misshapen. I think it's catching on the grid line, which is can be a problem. But I'm not not worrying about it.
Oh, barely made it. Of course, the smoother the surface, the nicer these little tapers usually look, but this is very, very rough. If I had felt inclined to give it a little sand and do two coats of gesso, it would probably be a lot better, but someone was lazy, didn't feel like it. It's not like this is going to be appearing in the art gallery or anything. <laughs> be nice if my pieces ever got that good that they would display them in galleries and make millions of dollars. One can dream. Can't get out the grocery store without buying two bags of groceries and costing a hundred bucks. God, I don't know what's happening. Anyway, art clears the mind of all the garbage out there momentarily. What do you think so far? I'm liking it. It's looking very cheery. I have no plan for this, so this is totally impromptu. Nothing drawn up and practiced on beforehand, so <laughs> that's how I roll. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's try the blue tool and the larger end, and we'll go with the blue paint. I'm going to place this dot out a little bit just so that there's a gap um, because I want to make these petals a little more elongated than round. So on that grid line, just below the line. Let's change the, the shape of the petal a bit by pulling this dot out. At least that's the intention here. could certainly uh, scale this size down onto a smaller surface um, if you don't have one that's nearly 12 inch what was it yeah almost almost 12 just shrink it shrink it shrink it all right smaller end tuck it in there Yeah, it creates more of a point. Not sure how many people saw my community post you know, on YouTube. There's a community tab where occasionally I'll put a little update. And I uh, had a little procedure last week, follow up from the one that I had in November. And uh, so that went really well. And I see the surgeon next week for a follow up, but I think everything's healing up nicely. Now I need to get my energy back from all that anesthetic. Ugh hair falling out. I'm going to go get it all chopped off next week. I get tired of big globs of hair on the floor. How about you guys? Oh, it drives me nuts. 
and I'm not coloring my hair anymore so I've got one year under my belt so I'm gonna cut off a lot of the colored ends and try and get it all back on track can't wait time to embrace the natural although I'm very lucky in our family but they don't go white until they're in their late 80s anyway Ooh, I'm liking this blue not liking this board sort of sucks up the paint a bit come on there we go there then we're gonna do one more row because I've got room there <clears throat> we're gonna have to go with the green tool here I could switch over to the dotting rods but I can do quite a bit with these metal tips as long as my tip is clean okay my eye wants to go green if I go green it'll tie into the screen and it'll take us to this they'll meet here Let's do a straight petal. Let's see. Get this big. All different styluses on the market it's always a challenge doing tutorials <clears throat> on because I know everybody wants to know what number is that what number is that just load up your tool and make it a graduation like a tapering from small to large here you don't have to be given a tool number just plop the paint on until it looks like it needs to be bigger. You can keep building on that with just one tool. You figure it out over time. I've been doing this since 2017. So it becomes like you're, you just have this sort of muscle memory of knowing what's the next tool. Okay, I'm gonna clean this off. I'm gonna go back to the blue tool bigger end of the blue tool to carry that down. The paint needs to be thinned a bit but we're just gonna I'm just gonna work with it here see if we can get it to go down. There. Oops. And to kiss a little bit there and so there's no overlap there which is good
almost there. What are you all thinking about when you're dotting? What's for dinner? <laughs> or counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's funny how the brain is. Look at that. I like love, 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 love. So pretty. So pretty. Okay, I think it's safe enough to go in there and do a little bit of gold dots. And going with the small end of the pink tool. And I'm just going to place a dot wherever there's a little gap. See, I'm kind of doing it like a taper in a sense. You don't have to do this. It was quite pretty without doing that. I just like to fill in the space. I can't help myself. Go with what your gut is, though, and what looks good to you. And you could use a different color. You could use white. Whatever you fancy. And these are always just guides to give you some inspiration on something. We all need that. I've been doing a lot of other people's tutorials lately just because it's been easier than trying to think up something new. If you use a cone, these might be a little more consistent sizes. Whatever you're comfortable with. You might even need a magnifying glass to do it. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Do we need to do that center ring? I think we'll leave it. I think we'll leave it. Okay, I'm going to use a number five. I'm going to use orange, and in that little space, I'm just placing a dot. It's getting a bit thick. These are smaller dots, I still want them nice and plump. So that's why I keep adding adding that paint to it just so they the plumper they are, then they reflect so much more light and they look so shiny. Clean off the tool. I want to go and start a new petal here and 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 I'll do it in blue start size an 11 for me.
that little orange dot is uh, sort of like a transition dot into sort of my next extending it out a little bit so this way transition dot in a sense I don't know does look like it fit there <laughs> I love this blue And I, when I pick the colors, I will often look at the color wheel subconsciously and find a complementary color to go with it, so that or a double complementary, um, so that they feel good together. So, like the orange and the yellow, they look good together. So there is a little bit of thought behind what I do, but sort of what my eye likes to look at. Yeah. There's my color wheel. Where's the blue? Blue. So orange would be the complementary, but just to the side of the blue. They call it they call it a split complementary. Um, very handy. So like if we were doing this violet, what color would go really cool with it? Green. Worth getting one of these. They've, they've helped teach me a lot. I think when you look at a mandala and you ask yourself, what is it I like about it? What am I feeling from it? Does it evoke memories, times in your life where the colors remind you of a time like these bright colors might remind me a little bit during the late 80s, early 90s with the jackets that I wore were really bright and fluorescent. So it kind of brings out those kind of memories. I think all pieces should evoke some feeling Or they do anyway for me. Okay, what do you think? Are we, are we getting there? I'll zoom in again. You'll have to see my messy workstation. There we go. Okay, white tool, large end. We're going with the gold because I just like gold. I think this probably could be a little bit bigger. But we'll just go with this and see how it turns out. I'm not going square up against the blue dot. There's about uh, two, a millimeter and a half distance. Again, I just want to try and evoke or, or make a neat, more of an elongated at all. So if you just pull it out just a teeny bit, it will help do that. For those that are a little more speedy, you can change the settings in YouTube to either slow or speed yourself. So if you want your video to go a little faster, you can just change the setting. There's usually a little drop down somewhere, depending on the device you're watching it on. can never make everybody happy when you make these things. So luckily YouTube has some tools there to help you make it more customized for you, including translation, provided the video is capable. 
I read somewhere that if the video is too long, that translation tool doesn't work. I know you don't need to hear my voice. At least I put most of the tool sizes and colors on there for you. So far, no swooshes. You think I can make it through this Mandela without doing a swoosh? <laughs> I'm gonna try. Let's try and do an all dotted Mandela. I know there's some people out there that just hate them. <laughs> so let's try. Let's try and do no swooshes on this one. I can't guarantee anything though. Okay, large end of the blue tool, and we're gonna. I'm gonna have to thin this a teeny bit. And this is where I pull in the flow aid. It just makes it more liquidy. And that's all I needed. That's all she needed. It's much better. Okay, like the other rows, <clears throat> we'll place bigger dot here mm, I love this paint they all have a very unique unique different properties every brand so it's fun to experiment certainly know which ones I wouldn't buy again <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna stay with the same end but just put less pressure on that first dot because I want to be able to make it all the way around Four and a large dot here. Oh, I so badly want to do a swoosh down the side here, but I'm not. I'm gearing up in my mind to do a swoosh video for you guys next. I know so many people are loving the new swoosh looks. Please go to Demi's channel and take her brush swooshing course. I think it's uh, all on those beautiful neutrals. You can learn so much from her on how to do that.
splurge under the green tool. Kind of like four dipping dots. I am going to pause it at some point here just because if I don't start pausing it. The video is going to be like three hours long. You don't want that. You can never upload. <laughs> All right, so carry on. Okay, next I'm going to use a six and blue. And do a dot on either side. We're going to taper down in there, uh, but I'm going to start with a five on either side here. Let's see if we can do the large end of the green tool and make our way down. I uh, just had to make up some more paint, so let's see. Oh yeah, that'll be fine. I'm 
And there you have it. This one's a little bit bigger. I've got more paint on it. Ooh, I love this. A little bit messy there. I can clean that up later. Well, I'm going to take a little break at this spot, go have some breakfast and whatnot, but wow, I really am loving this. I like how the center has more of the green look. And then we go into that blue. Oh, I can't wait for this one to be done. Here's my little trick to keep my paint covered while I go on a break is I use Press and Seal by Glad. And that seals around the edges of my paint here. So it keeps that air out until next time. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, here we go. I'm back, had some breakfast, did some gardening, and now we're going to do some painting for a little bit. Number 13, I'm going to use the violet color. Oops, I see a boo boo there I need to fix. Oh well, we'll get to it. And a big plump dot right there. And something else to fix. Okay, we're back. Okay, so you can see that's right on a cross on the grid line there. So same spot. The paint got a little bit runny, so that's why it got drippy. You see how transparent that is compared to that one? So that's, that's why I load it up. And try not to drip it as I go along. One thing I really enjoy about dotting is that even if I mess up, make a drip, whatever, just take a break and fix it. Black paint goes a long way on Q-tips. Cat hairs. My new kitten, he's almost a year, I think in June he'll be a year, his hair has turned out very long. Very fluffy, so we have these little dust bunnies around the house. Even though I keep my door closed into my craft room here, they still seem to make their way in. Don't know the answer to that other than just pick it out when I see it. <laughs> you can probably hear him demanding some attention in the background. End up having to close my door. So I need a partnering name to Hippy Dippy. Hippy Dippy. Happy Dotty? Oh, that sounds too much like Happy Dotting. Great name.
Okay, plump dots. That was a 13, by the way. Okay, I think I'm going to surround these dots with gold, just dotting around. It's a longer process, but I think it'll frame this bright pink dot very nicely. So just place your dots all the way around. And then I will do some transition down in that way as well. See my gold is getting a bit thicker because the dots are a little bit. Oh, they just feel funny. You can you can tell. And this I'm going to make one giant last petal. So sort of replicating this idea. I think it would be a really nice way to finish this design. Yeah, that green in the woods driving me batty. There we go. It's coming together. Okay, large end of the blue and blue. Growly Gracie in the background. She doesn't like the uh, kitten getting too close to her. It's getting better though. Okay. Before I do these tapers, I want to put something in here that's not blue. But I think it's going to be green. And I want it to be bigger. Six. Okay, then we'll go back to the taper. Green, my two love there. So I think still the large end of the blue. Switch over to the small end. There.
little bit mushed there. It's getting just a little bit stringy. I often don't mind when they run together, but I've got three of them running together there. That's a bit much for me, so I'm gonna fix that up. Okay, after mistakes fixed and the rest of them in there, I think we're looking pretty good. All I used um, was a little silicone tool like this, and you can scrape the dots off because it's got a nice point and then just put a little bit of black and and you're all set uh, okay so now I'm going to go to the red and I want a large dot there because I did a dip and dot all the way around this it's making this petal more round so I'm going to try and elongate it a little bit. This is a six. And the paint's drying up. My final color will be a green to bring that green back in again. But I'm going to try and get it a couple more rows in here first. Being a bit lazy about thinning this paint. It's only drying out really just because it's warm in here. other one was called hippy dippy maybe this should be called lottie dotty because <laughs> oh. it's a lot of dots do you guys put names on your mandalas sometimes i do sometimes i don't okay so that was a six Try and tuck it in there just so that I can get that shape going again that I like. Okay, I am going to try the large end of the green to do this rest of this taper, but I think it will be a few sort of dipping dots like this first. That helps switching the end sometimes if you think you're going to run out of paint. Oh, I love that color contrast. It's the blue. Okay. 
this town. Some people can just do this perfectly without having to switch tools. I want to know their secret. <laughs> Anybody? Okay, there she is with those tapers in. It's pretty amazing how the colors just really play off each other. All right, another little break and we'll carry on. So I have removed my grid lines from the, this part of the piece that has dried overnight. And I find sometimes it gives me a little idea on how the negative space looks, you know, whether, you know, you, you leave a floating dot or you connect it with, with something in here, which I will probably do. In the meantime, I'm going to carry on with this petal adding um, orange next in an eight. And then after the orange, I'm going to use this green to finish off with the green in this type of dot pattern. So that's the idea here. Let's see how we execute this. <laughs> I just thinned out this paint just a little bit. So it might be a teeny bit runny. So I'm gonna to have to be careful to make sure the dots don't connect. So I think I will have room to do two big ones and like this little trio at the end here to bring it right out to the edge of the canvas. I hope so, anyway. I have to close that window. I got a little bit close there. It's a toss up whether I take it off. I think it looks okay from a distance. So. That's the thing when you thin out your paint, it will run out a little bit more than when you don't. <laughs> I was re listening back on my video clips from yesterday and I really ought to give myself a nickel for every time I say okay. Is that a Canadian thing or is that just me? I guess everybody has their own little things they say. Okay. At least it's not A. I am Canadian but I don't know many people who actually say that. <laughs> Okay, clean that off. See, there, I did it again, again. I did it again. Okay, okay. So that was an eight. Pick the tool size that works for your your own mandala there. It might not might not be the same as mine. Darn cat hair. Dotting at an awkward angle for me normally, so it's hard for me to see the left side here. It's just for the videos, so you can see what I'm doing better. Ah. Like I'm dotting a little bit blind on that side, so I keep going a little bit too close. So I'm gonna have to consciously bring it out a bit. There.
Okay, there we go. So just each time you go down, just take your tool size smaller until you can use a stylus. It's a large end of the green tool. And I think that all the way around. We'll use the eight. And we're just going to finish off a little bit differently. Do the two dots as we have over here. And then the third, which should take you to the edge of the canvas. There. Three biggies. And then we're going to do an outline. So an outline meaning dip and dot each time. So this is the large side of the green tool. Oops. And we're just going to make a shape that just borders and then tapers in. So dip and dot so that they're all the same size. And this kind of mirrors a little bit like what we did in the middle there, just to bring back that um, like one size of dot, just to add a, make it look a little different. And I think about here, I can start to taper in quite nicely. And then it connects with that green there. There we go. So do that on all of them. I absolutely love that green. It, it's so interesting. Every time you add, or I add another color as the outer ring, it changes the whole look. Yeah, really, really like it. So that petal is done. Um, and I have decided that I will put something in here, I think. I think I'm going to do three, three dots with one little connecting dot there. And I'm going to use that color there. Which one is that? That's... That's the ready color. So that's this one here. It's the large end of the green tool. I 
these are just little filler dots um, so totally optional of course everything is make it your own and I will be doing some top dots because I want to tie this into hippy dippy um, I'm gonna call it trippy dippy no trippy hippy <laughs> yeah trippy hippy I think that's that would be a cool cool sister name kind of trippy colors all right I'll come back here just using the small end of the pink tool I'm just putting one little gold dot there ah placement is sucky today so I'll keep a little bit of the black space there, but just adding a little detail. I should know better not to dot after I've had a busy day. Went out for a hike with my husband. See, I had a little mess up here. So I'm a little on the tired side. Okay, well, I'm going to fix that and we'll be right back. Now I'm just adding the same detail that we have here to the tip of here and that ties it in and once that's done I don't think I want to add anything more in here because I'm liking I am really liking this whole shape it's uh it's always good to know when to stop <laughs> Now this is the large end of the green to tool, um, but my paint is getting a little bit thick, so I'm just making it the size that I want it. Uh, the joys at the end of dotting. Okay, hold on, let's add a little bit more. Thought I could get away with it, but not quite the way I liked it. There's a trippy hippie. And now I'm going to do the top dots. I'll probably come back later on to do that, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what we're talking about here. So here is the other tutorial, but this is on a larger canvas and expanded out with some extra little details. So the top dots that I'm thinking will be ones that have a real impact. So orange on top of the red or that pinky color. And, you know, so it really gives that wow factor. So let me do this. Let me just put that back. Um, undecided about what to do on the blue dots, but I am going to put the orange on these. I think it'll look pretty cool. If your canvas is a little bit bigger and you shrink your tools down just a bit, you can do this same little element at the very end of this and I think that would look really pretty too. Uh, that's where a little more planning comes into play and you know I could probably even put a little trio right here. See if I can fit that in. So I'm going to put purple onto the green This is where, sorry, you're bouncing there. This is where things are really gonna start looking very different. Oops, helps if I dip my tool in the right paint. There you go. I 
As always, like I like to say, just make it your own if you don't like the top dots or the particular color, just change it. Six orange. Same size, the six will fit on the next one as well, right here. I'm going to do green. Because I put green on that, I will put one in the center here as well. I don't want it massive, so let's see, I think a seven. Let's see what that looks like. Go with a seven and the blue. Blue, my paint's not too dry. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I think I like it as is. I was contemplating putting top dots on the petals themselves, but I'm going to leave it. You got to know when to stop. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I might on those orange ones, but we'll see. Here she is, all done. Thank you so much for watching, and please hit like and subscribe, and then I'll see you next time.